Hey guys, it's 2016, and yes, it is really, really hard to set up your own server, like your own PHP server nowadays. I just did it, tried to do it myself with Nginx and PHP and, um, you know, some socket to get it working. It was a bit of a nightmare, um, and I want to roll out a whole bunch of PHP machines, and I think I found a, a, a nice sweet spot way of doing it, and I wanted to show you how I do it, and maybe you can offer suggestions how to improve it so first first and foremost I want to set up like a kind of like a CDN so um, I want to set up different machines around the world um, and right now I'm kind of doing this manually but I'm also just doing it manually so you, you understand my favorite OS right now is core OS just because it it's a lightweight self update <coughs> self updating OS just to run docker files that use the system D. I don't really, any, I'm, basically I, I want to focus on using system D and docker. That's it, seriously. That's it, that's all I want, that's all I need. So let me set up, where shall I set up the machine? Uh, let, let's just do it in Singapore because it will probably be faster since I'm in Singapore. And let's call this um, sgtest.webconverger.com, okay. So let's create the droplet. So um, of course you could just do this with an EC2 instance or some some other VPS provider. Really doesn't matter. I'm just showing you here using a droplet because it's five bucks a month and it's quite cheap and it's quite good actually. Um, so what we do is set up set up the VPS droplet EC2 whatever it's called. In this industry, it has a zillion different names. It's a bit annoying. I get the IP. And then I, I go to my DNS interface, which is uh, root 53. And I put it in there, hosted zone. Yep, create a record set. Okay, I call this SG test, put in the IP. And now we have that should be resolving to the newly created droplet. Um, okay, now let's set up the droplet. And the way we're gonna set up a droplet is with a systemd service file. And that's the one you're, just, you're looking at. And we're gonna set it up with the caddy server with this configuration. So let me quickly run through this. Um, this is a system C, the system uh, service file. If you don't know what systemd is, well, you need to learn about it. It's the way processes are run and maintained on on machines nowadays. And interestingly, with systemd, you can like succinctly say what's 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 going to go what's going to happen here. So with this systemd file, it requires Docker, and it's run at, at the user as a certain user. Um, uh, I'm not too sure that this is needed. And basically what we're doing here is we, we're, we're running a certain Docker image. And before we even run the image, we actually fetch it, fetch the image. So, I mean, a lot of people use Puppet and Ansible and all other things to set up things. I like to use Docker. It's, uh, I think it's a much nicer way of doing it. And then um, there's, if you, you might be wondering what this RM and kill stuff is. So when you run it, you kind of run it under like a name like Caddy. And then when you sort of restart it, it gets sort of killed and deleted here and then re, re, restarted here. So it's like a stateless machine, but these volume binds here, minus V, uh, sort of connected to the configuration, connected to maybe where you're serving the files from. And this little bit is for some SSL conf uh, key caching or something like that. And the, the, the caddy file here is for another machine of mine, but it, it applies to this one. Instead of having sf.dl, we're going to have the SG test. You need to have your, um, your, your email for um, let's encrypt because we're going to do SSL here. And I, this is the root directory. This is how to connect it to PHP. And this is just some extra stuff for, for uh, showing um, the logs. So with any luck, we're gonna quickly get going here. Let's um, quickly get going here and set up a machine. And I'll just hopefully show you how easy it is to set up. 
Okay, so this is my service file. So system uh, service file gets set up, uh, gets put in, oops, gets put in this uh, etc system d uh, directory. Oops, needs to have a root, and uh, the caddy file in this case is just here. Um, let's just change it. So this is uh, SG test. I think that's all we need. Oh, we should maybe correct it. And then here we'll go like index.php. Sorry, it doesn't seem to like my terminal. And we'll go like hello world or something like that. And then PHP, PHP info. Just to make sure our PHP instance works. Okay, that should be good. Yeah. So now we have the configuration file there. Now we have that service D file in the right place. Now you, all you need to do is enable that um, that caddy uh, uh, service. So it's enabled. And what I prefer to do, instead of starting it, I, I like to reboot. So this is kind of like a stateless machine thing. You want to make sure your your stuff survives a reboot, because Core OS itself, when it updates, <laughs> it just reboots your machine. So you need to make sure your services can easily tolerate a reboot. Okay, so um, with any luck, that will be back up and running. So the reason why I choose Caddy servers because it's fairly simple. Um, it's got a Docker image, and it's got like some interesting. Interest, it, I like how it sets up SSL for you automatically. I mean, it, it's like couldn't be easier. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite interested, in it. and and I'm also just thinking, you know, it's 2016. I think Apache and Nginx has just got a lot of cruft. Like as I mentioned the other day, I was setting up PHP, and it was just just a bit too hard, if you know what I mean. Just a little bit too hard. So I like that the fact is that you know this is six lines of configuration. This is maybe 20. So 26 lines sort of defines the configuration of my server. And that's that's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay, so systemd status to see um, if how the caddy thing is going. And it looks okay, so it wasn't running before, so this will obviously fail, but it, it looks like it, it pulled successfully the Docker image and um, it looks like it's running so and you must make sure the dns resolves otherwise the https won't work so now if we go to sgtest.welcomevirtual.com everything should just work and it does look at that look at that sweetness i got a let let's encrypt uh, ssl thing there and i got a hello world there so i mean isn't that amazing uh, i think i've really hit the sweet spot here just very quickly, if you want to see, um, if you want to maybe drill into your Docker image, you, you, or see what's running rather, Docker PS. So yeah, there's a few technologies here. Core OS, which is really just, in my opinion, uh, a, a Linux image running Docker, running System D. There are, uh, if you if you hang around Core OS or see my other video, they probably don't like the way that I've done it, but I like the way that I've done it because I think it's super duper duper simple. Um, uh, Core OS want to upsell maybe some sort of cloud in it, and that would describe how your service file works and uh, your con where your configurations live. But I really like the idea of SCPing it. Well, I've just wget it here, and then you enable it and you reboot, and you have a machine. So now you can start developing app or copy in your app code. And you're good to go. Um, it couldn't get any easier, could it? Could it? If it can, please let me know. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give me a big thumbs up. Thank you for watching.